Malcolm Davis, uh, you're a strategic analyst with the Australian Strategic Policy Institute. We've had you on before, but thanks for coming on Australia in Space TV. Oh, it's my pleasure. Uh, Malcolm, we were off camera talking about your, the scope of the work that you do, national security, mm. uh, defence and also space. Uh, you were just on a sort of national security and space panel session here in Canberra at the Space Industry Association of Australia's yep. Southern Space Conference. Um, you mentioned space control, uh, the current strategic operational environments for space assets uh, and also AUKUS. Maybe an overview, it's a hard question to ask you, but yeah, your current state of play, I suppose, within the operational strategic context and the challenges that you see? Look, I think what we are facing is the prospect of uh, intensifying major power competition between China and the US, between Russia and the US, uh, that could potentially escalate into major power conflict. There's a number of flashpoints around the world. Obviously, we we're all watching what happens with Ukraine, the potential risk of escalation there. But you know, in the Indo-Pacific, it's Taiwan, it's the South China Sea, it's the Korean Peninsula, and obviously Middle East as well, in terms yep. of the potential for escalation there. So we are seeing multiple simultaneous crises around the world, and I think these are being carefully coordinated by Moscow and Beijing to try and over overextend and test Western liberal democracy, to challenge Western liberal democracy as a system. So it's part of a global conflict that we're facing uh, that's in the early stages. And space obviously is an important uh, operational domain in that regard. Yeah, You've talked about also the terminologies around the militarisation of space, also the weaponisation. Uh, I think we all understand that the militarisation of space is a you know, has always been with us. Yep. It's part of the sort of the motivations for being in space as well, that situational awareness. But now we are talking about the weaponisation of space, uh, the Viasat attack just prior to the invasion of Ukraine by Russia mm. is an operational tactic, I suppose, and somewhat, uh, somewhat a weaponisation yep. against space assets. Where do you see the US versus its adversaries like Russia and China? They've done ASAT tests themselves, but do you find it's sort of a balance and where, where do you find the situation? Who's Who's got the upper hand I suppose is the question. I would have to say that it's China and Russia that has the upper hand at the moment. The US has obviously a nascent anti-satellite capability as you say they tested these during the Cold War, they've developed uh, more sophisticated systems since then but they've held off actually operationally deploying these things because the US and its allies and partners uh, seek to try and um, ensure that international legal means and diplomacy prevent the Russians and the Chinese from going down the path of space weaponization. I have to say that hope is fading. Uh, I think you are seeing China and Russia moving much more aggressively towards space weaponization, uh, you know, even to the point of Russia developing a nuclear weapons based anti-satellite capability which would be a direct and deliberate violation of the 1967 Outer Space Treaty if it's deployed. Yes. So I think that what we are facing is a prospect where in the future space is highly contested, it's a war fighting domain, we understand that the Chinese and the Russians in the next war will try and attack our critical space support from the outset or even prior to the outset of a war, so the first shots of the next war may be fired in space. The signal that that sends to Australia and our sovereign capability to launch our own satellites, we don't even have our own satellite, let alone uh, that, but the, the signal that that should send, send to us, we're, we're sort of moving into an era now where Australia will have launch capability, uh, and does, but mm -hmm. uh, in terms of an industry, it'll be there. But the environment to be launching satellites rapidly is uh, a mm -hmm. long way away. The, maybe a time frame or the importance uh, of this, of, just from the observations that you have? Well, I think we're probably within 12 months of seeing first Australian launch of an, of, a, of an Australian satellite on an Australian launch vehicle from an Australian launch site. Yep. Gilmore Space is probably leading that effort. Um, they're moving towards their first launch out of Bowen. I think in terms of more general uh, space launch capability, you're seeing three potential launch sites, Bowen obviously in Queensland, Nullumboy in the Northern Territory and Whalers Way in South Australia. So we do have the beginnings of a sovereign launch capability. Um, and I think that the, the challenges that we're facing in terms of a contested space domain mean that Australia is thinking in a far more sophisticated manner and more mature manner about space than it used to. We're now recognising the importance of space as an operational domain in its own right. 
of established defence space command. Space domain awareness is hugely important with the establishment of the deep space advanced radar capability out at Exmouth and space is becoming part of AUKUS in that regard. But most importantly, uh, when you look at uh, recent uh, defence policy documents such as the National Defence uh, Strategy, space control is becoming a key mission that we're now going to be looking at. Space control requires us to work with the US and other partners to counter the, the ASET threats that we're facing in space. The other one is we've done some Kanini uh, uh, interviews this morning, so three uh, satellites just went up into space on the Falcon 9. Uh, so it's, it sounds like we've got the ingredients to have launch capability of our own satellites should the worst case scenario happen. Is that conf Are you confident that we can put that together relatively quickly if it becomes absolutely. Uh, critical? Yeah, absolutely. Providing government uh, steps back from trying to over-regulate the launch sector. Yep. Uh, I think the problem we have at the moment is you have uh, the Australian government that's, that's basically burying uh, space companies in regulation and red tape, the slowing down uh, progress in that regard. So we do need to deregulate as much as practicable, but we have all the expertise, we have the technology, we have the locations, we have the geography. We can do sovereign space launch from this country once we the government gives us the, the go-ahead. Yeah, I think we had you on recently on a, on a session. It's a being agile and adaptable in the current environment is completely unpredictable in terms of where we're going and how fast we're going to be going there, even though we don't want know what that situation is going to be. Uh, I suppose on a conference like this after a couple of days in Canberra, it gives you a sense that we do have that capability and we do have a growing industry in Australia? Absolutely. When you look at Australia now, we have a number of important space conference events. Next year we're hosting IAC in Sydney, the International Astronautical Congress. You know, it, it, it's a mark of maturity in this country's uh, a, 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 a approach to space that we're having these important events. Uh, I do think that particularly with the IAC coming up in Sydney, government needs to actually step up and actually provide some really important um, uh, uh, step forward for space as a, you know, in Australia. If they don't, if we basically go to IAC and, and it's a status quo situation, then there's going to be a big letdown. So I really do think people will be looking for some major takeaway from IAC from Australia. Now that could be you know, recognition that Australia fully supports sovereign space launch. It could be the establishment of a core of Australian astronauts that can fly on Artemis missions to the moon. Uh, there's a various different range of, of potential opportunities there, but government has to step up and the commercial sector has to be given the chance to step up. Nice. A nice call to action to, to conclude. Dr Malcolm Davis with the Australian Strategic Policy Institute, thanks for once again for joining us on Australia in Space TV. Thanks. Have Always a, a pleasure. Time.